Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at passive transport, simple diffusion, diffusion across cell membranes, and then we'll finish with a summary. So in order to sustain life and keep surviving, we have to be able to exchange substances in and out of our cells, so that's between the cells and the environment that they live in, and also the environment outside of our body. So for example, our cells need a continuous supply of oxygen, and they also need a supply of glucose in order to carry out respiration. And the more we use energy, the more the demand will be for these two types of molecule. So we need these to be ingested in our food, for the example of glucose, and then taken from our food into the cells. We breathe in oxygen, which goes through our lungs, into the blood, and into all of our cells, including those of the lungs and heart. And as we respire, we also produce the waste products of CO2. And as we break down certain molecules, we make other waste products like urea. And these toxic, more harmful chemicals need to leave the cell, leave various tissues and then be excreted in various ways, like being breathed out for carbon dioxide or excreted in the urine as urea. So these are just a few examples. There are many, many different molecules that need to get in and out of cells, but we must be able to exchange things with the environment that the cells live in. And some of these substances can be sent through the cell membrane from one side to the other without using any metabolic energy provided by the cell. And we call this passive transport. So anything referring to passive means basically allowed to happen on its own without any energy input. So for passive transport, we don't need any ATP to be made or any hydrolysis of ATP in order for this to be carried out. The substances that we're talking about here are able to move freely across the cell membranes due to the natural motion of the particles as they are. So they only use their own kinetic energy to move. So when we say particles, this can refer to the idea that we could have atoms or molecules and charged particles like ions as well. So particles just going to be a vague term that we use to describe particles usually in the form of an air or a liquid. And every particle, as long as there's a temperature, they have their own degree of kinetic energy where they're moving around in various directions and sort of colliding with each other randomly. So it's this kinetic energy which fuels their movement nothing provided by our own cells. So simple diffusion is a method of transport we need to talk about, and it's an example of passive transport. So simple diffusion is what we'll be talking about, and diffusion is the net movement of particles from an area of higher concentration, so where there are more of them, to an area of lower concentration. So it's really important that you nail this definition. It's a net movement, which means an overall movement of the particles from an area where there's lots of them to an area where there's less of them. So for example, we've got an area where there are more particles here. Again, each of them have their own kinetic energy randomly moving around. Overall, because there is less over here, they're going to move in this direction. The reason diffusion actually happens is because every particle has its own kinetic energy, and so it can move freely in the environment, randomly changing its direction, colliding into each other. So it's a bit of a messy sort of movement. So every single particle, has its own kinetic energy, and it's moving in whichever direction it happens to be going. So it's just like a load of balloons moving around randomly in the wind. But in order for diffusion to occur, we have to have an area where there's more and an area where there's less. And when we have this, we call it a concentration gradient of that substance. So for example, here, we've got a high concentration of this particular particle, and then down here, on the other side, we have a low concentration. So this means we have a concentration gradient. The gradient is going from here to over here. So this is the gradient. The gradient describes the direction that it wants to go. It's almost like a slope going from one place where it's heavier to one place where it isn't so heavy. And so the net movement will be from high to low. So again, all of these particles are moving at random. And this will result in the particles colliding with each other and they start moving away from each other. So we've got this kind of closed container here and each of these particles which have mainly gathered in this area are moving in random directions and eventually they're going to start hitting each other, colliding and bouncing off each other. And eventually they're going to start moving away and spreading out. And eventually through time this results in a net movement or an overall movement of the particles from where there's lots of them to where there's less of them, until they get evenly dispersed, at which point we've reached equilibrium. So eventually all of these particles have started to spread out, so it's not as if each one has individually gone over to the low sides, because then we would end up having a high over here and a low over here. 
all that happens is they're all moving randomly, so there's no directional choice. They're just bumping around completely randomly, and so are the ones in the low concentration area too. Until eventually, the ones that are bunched up collide more, spread out more, and then eventually they spread out so that it's evenly spread across the area. And once we've done this, we've reached equilibrium. So now there's no area of high or low concentration, it's all roughly the same concentration. So at equilibrium, the particles are all still moving freely because they haven't lost any kinetic energy, and they're moving randomly too, but there's no net movement. There's still an equal movement in all directions. So now what's happening is that every particle is still moving by its own accord, but they're all moving randomly, and even though some are going to be going that way, some will be going that way, some that way, and some that way, overall there's no net movement. And this is even if we have some particles going that way, there will be some going that way too. So it sort of counteracts, it sort of balances out. So there's no net movement at equilibrium. Simple diffusion doesn't just happen in a container with nothing in it, it can occur across membranes as well. So simple diffusion across the cell membrane needs the particles to pass through the phospholipid bilayer. Remember the membrane can act as a boundary from one part of the cell to another or from the outside of the cell to the inside. But in order to get around this, they have to go through the membrane itself. So the equilibrium is reached again when the concentration of particles is equal on either side of that cell membrane. So there's no net movement. So overall, even if they were starting out on higher concentration here and low over here, they would have eventually moved through. But when they've reached equilibrium, then there will be some passing through in this direction, but there will be an equal amount of those passing through in that direction. And they're always randomly moving. Again, remember, each one has their own direction and kinetic energy. But overall, there's no net movement. So this is what can confuse people. There's always movement going on, and each particle is always moving. But at equilibrium, there's no net movement, because every time one goes that side, there will be one going that side. So the only molecules that can do passive diffusion have particular properties, specific molecules that can do this easily, and they have to be small and non-polar. So for example, carbon dioxide is a very small molecule, and it's not polar, so it doesn't have any charge density on one particular part of the molecule. And therefore another example would be O2, or oxygen. You can have some other molecules that do this, so small polar molecules with small differences in charge can do this, but they'll do this a bit more slowly across the phospholipid bilayer. So, for example, water is a molecule that is very small, but it is polar, because the oxygen area tends to be more negative, and the hydrogen area is a little bit more positive. But it's not very strongly polar, so it's still able to get across that membrane. But any particles which are charged, so these would be ions, like sodium, potassium, and any larger molecules, like glucose, would not be able to pass through the bilayer. So any charged particles, and also large particles, like glucose, neither of these can get through the membrane. So this is why we describe the cell membrane as being partially permeable, because it only allows certain things to pass through diffusion. These things can get into the cell via other methods, but it is not through diffusion. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.